people who live in glass houses can't keep secrets. But a goldfish doesn't seem to care that his life is an open book, that his days are spent in a glare of publicity. With fish below the ocean, it used to be a different matter. Deep in the ocean, a fish could feel safe from prying eyes. And now all that's been changed by underwater photography. Today, even sea monsters are standing in line to have their pictures taken. In night black waters, never warmed by the sun, is a world of fantastic life. Here, for example, is the rosy feathered starfish dancing jitterbug of the ocean floor. Another queer creature dangles little fishing lines from his body to attract and to catch smaller bits of submarine life. The beautiful girdle of Venus is almost completely transparent. Many of these deep sea citizens have never before been seen in their natural form because when they are taken suddenly to the surface, they explode. The reason for this is that the fish have built up tremendous pressure inside to balance the pressure of the water outside. This outside pressure is, of course, due to the weight of water above. 2,000 feet down, the fish have to sustain a force of almost 1,000 pounds on each square inch of their skin. The deeper the water, the higher the pressure. A fish would have to resist a water pressure of more than seven tons on each square inch in order to live six miles down in the deepest part of the ocean. Just imagine holding two elephants on one finger. Suppose we were to live on the bottom of an ocean. How would we feel under pressure? Let's ask someone who actually does live 24 hours a day, every day of the year, right down on the ocean floor. Let's ask this man here. He ought to be able to tell us. Hey, mister, how does it feel down there at the bottom of the ocean? Bottom of the ocean? Say, are you feeling all right? What ocean? Why, the ocean of air, the one we're at the bottom of right now. Look up. What do you see? Well, I see just air. You see air. What does it look like? Well, it's uh, just, well, it's blue. Sorry, but it isn't. If you were up there far enough, the sky would be black all around you. Fact is, you can't see air at all. That blueness you see is caused by dust, dust particles floating high in the air. The ocean of air goes up at least 50 miles and may go even higher. And all that air presses down on us just like water in the ocean presses down on the fish. Yes, mister, we are all living at the bottom of an ocean, an ocean of air at least 50 miles deep. There's lots and lots of air and a good thing too because where would we be without it? We'd be in a vacuum, that's where we'd be. I got you that time. All right, what is a vacuum? <laughs> that's simple. A vacuum's the stuff that runs these windshield wipers. Oh, it is, is it? Well, just how does it do it? Why, uh... Aha! Try again. What is a vacuum? I guess it's just nothing. If that's the case, then how can nothing run those windshield wipers? Well, you tell me. All right, I will. It's air pressure that runs those windshield wipers. The vacuum is a control, a way of putting the air pressure all around us to work. How do you suppose, for instance, that you breathe? Well, I just... Pull the air into my lungs. It's simple once you learn the trick. I've known how ever since I was a baby. Sorry, but you're on the wrong track again. You really use the same principle that makes the engine in your car breathe. Makes my car breathe? Sure, your car uses vacuum control to make the normal air pressure all around force the air and gasoline into the carburetor and the engine. This is how it works. Each of the six cylinders in your engine acts as a pump, just as your chest muscles do. When a piston in the engine moves down, it makes more space inside the cylinder. 
A little smoke will show how the air rushes in to fill that empty space, with all the weight of the ocean of air behind it. So that's the way you and your car breathe. We can see another result of this pressure around us, about 15 pounds on each square inch, if we put a toy balloon inside a jar. We can add a little smoke to make the movement of the air in the jar visible. Now, if we connect the jar to the vacuum inside the engine, we can take most of the air out of the jar. That takes the pressure away from the outside of the balloon. Then the air inside the balloon expands and makes the balloon bigger. Remember, the fish would explode if they were taken up where the pressure is low. Now, here's a way we can get this air pressure all around us, squeezing in from every direction with a force of 15 pounds in every square inch to do work for us. We can connect a small chamber to the engine vacuum. Inside the chamber, dividing it into two sections, is a sliding plunger. A little valve can control the action so that we get a vacuum on one side of the plunger and normal pressure on the other side. Again, smoke will show how it works. When we move the valve a little bit, we apply the engine vacuum to one side of the plunger. The normal air pressure in the other side of the chamber will give the plunger a strong push. We can reverse the effect to get a strong push in the opposite direction by simply moving the valve to apply the vacuum to the other side of the chamber. Notice how the smoke shows the air moving in and out as the vacuum changes sides. And notice that almost no effort at all is required to move the valve. The air does all the pushing. The plunger follows the slightest movement of the valve so that we get exact control of the air pressure. Now let's get practical and connect one of these vacuum chambers and plungers to the gear shifting mechanism of a motor car. Then we can operate the valve control with the gear shift lever. Of course, by using more effort, we could shift gears without the help of this control. But by letting air pressure do 80% of the work of shifting gears for us, we leave just enough for ourselves to get the feel of what we're doing. So that's why this jigger works so easy. You puzzled it out for yourself. And one thing you can always depend on, there's always air around you pressure that you don't have to pay for or carry around with you. Now you have to keep in mind the fact that getting this principle to work for you requires a difference in the pressures involved. And that brings up the subject of relativity, simply a question of applied dynamics and mechanics. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs>